entire life has brought you to this moment. Do not fail yourself. Do not fail your family. The movie begins with the Yakuza henchmen, with their leader getting a tattoo. The leader complains about the pain he feels while getting the tattoo. As he threatens the artist, one of his subordinates brings in a letter. Opening it reveals the black sand in the envelope. Immediately, the tattoo master recoils in shock as he realizes history is about to repeat itself. The artist says whoever gets an envelope filled with black sand will meet his death soon because the envelope filled with black sand is a sign that a clan of cold-blooded assassin ninjas will kill the recipient of the envelope. In this story, he says the men involved laughed just as they did and paid with their lives. He also says that he should have died if not for a birth mistake. According to him, his heart was on the right side of his chest, so he was able to escape the ninja's blade. When he shows the Yakuza henchmen his scar, they all laugh hysterically. The Yakuza leader only thought the envelope filled with black sand was a joke. However, when the Yakuza leader and one of his henchmen underestimated the warning, suddenly, the Yakuza minion's head was cut by something from behind. The shadow's attackers destroyed the lights in the room and eliminated everyone in sight. Men were killed by a clan of assassin ninjas, who are always on the move and carry out their actions from behind the shadows. You don't have to do this, the tattoo artist warns him that it's pointless, but he doesn't listen and is also eliminated. So was the tattoo master. Then, the scene shows a Europol agent named Mika explaining something to her boss, Maslow. Mika reveals that she has found a connection between several assassinations of the most influential political figures in the government with the O's new clan, which she believes to be a clan of assassin ninjas. She asks for an hour to prove to him that the ninja clan exists. Maslow grants her his time, and she explains thoroughly how long the ninja clan has been operating, not forgetting to state that the ninja clan always requests 100 pounds of gold in exchange for a man's life. In her opinion, the Azanu clan has always been consistent in setting prices for all clients who need their services. Because of that, Mika can conclude that the Azanu clan is the mastermind behind a massacre at a Yakuza club in Osaka that occurred some time ago. Maslow seems to doubt the results of the investigation proposed by Mika because the existence of the Azanu clan is still considered a mere legend. Night in Berlin shows Rizo, a young man with a menacing look, at a laundromat putting some items into a washer. Just then, a young woman asks him to help her with a piece of cloth. She smiles admirably at Rizo. Rizo immediately sees through her disguise and asks for her clan. She pretends not to understand. I don't understand, knowing her cover is blown already, she attacks Rizo. He defends himself and executes her in the process. The laundromat's owner wakes from a slumber after hearing the unrest. He immediately runs to see what's wrong. Blood was seen flowing from one of the washing machines, and when he approached the washing machine, a woman's body was seen inside. The next day, when he was having lunch with Mika, he revealed to his subordinates that he had investigated Mika's theory and got crucial information about an ancient secret organization called the Nine Clans. Maslow said that a KGB agent named Alexei Sabaton was trying to uncover the Nine Clans organization involved in a series of murders of the most influential people worldwide decades ago. But everyone thinks that Sabaton is just making it up and has a mental disorder. Maslow compliments Mika, and she smiles. Meanwhile, Rizo walks into his apartment and inspects all his weapons. He's a ninja with a complete ninja arsenal hidden all over his apartment. He stares into space and flashes back to his childhood days. In the flashback, an old master is seen talking to a group of children as he tells them how honorable it is to be a member of the O's new clan. He introduces young Rizo to the group and tells them to treat him like family. Rizo and other students had to undergo heavy physical and mental training as a child because Lord Asanu was preparing them all to become cold-blooded and merciless assassin ninjas. Then we see a lecture their sensei gave them about hunger and thirst. He also told them how the blood in their veins was their body's weakness. Their clan master performed the feat of cutting his hand and healing it almost instantaneously. He then tells the young children to eat that night to fight again the following day. Then young Rizo is seen walking carefully with wounds under his legs. He walks so as not to upset the balance under the floor. He makes the mistake of worrying about the pin, and his master punishes him by flogging his legs. Young Rizo continues the walk to the finish at night. Young Rizo is seen whining in pain as his legs are poorly hurt. Just then, a girl from his group helps him treat the wounds under his legs. Her name is Kiriku. The flashback ends with older Rizo training with all kinds of weapons. He's preparing for something wrong. Meanwhile, 
Mika pays Mrs. Sabaton a visit about a report her husband wrote a while back. Mrs. Sabaton explains how her husband's report caused him to be more paranoid about his security. She says after the report gained some attention, he started installing lights, sensors, and cameras all over the house. She says he doesn't want any shadows around the house. She also explains that her husband was a soldier and that he wasn't one to be shaken easily. She recalled a man coming to their home and speaking with her husband. When asked about how her husband died, she said the lights went out and the deed happened. Mrs. Sabaton showed Mika some files her husband left behind. Mika accepts them and takes them to her home. At home, Mika checks Sabaton's investigation files. She finds evidence of the existence of the assassin ninja clan. She plays a tape she found in the files. On the tape, Rizo is seen fighting against ninjas, and then she sees his face, while Rizo is staring at the camera lens. Meanwhile, Rizo is seen training immensely with his weapons. At the end of his training, he flashes back to when he was fighting another colleague as a teenager. His colleague, Takeshi, threw flames at his eyes and struck him in the head. You think this is a pain? You are mistaken, the Azanu clan master shows Rizo what pain is and walks away screaming at the top of his lungs. Rizo is thrown into what seems like isolation. The following day shows the clan master meeting Rizo, already meditating in the room he locked him in. He commends Rizo and continues the day. In the present day, Mika is visited in her office by an agent from an unmentioned agency named Zabransky. The agent requests to ask Mika some questions and inquires about the unusually usual lunch dates she and Agent Maslow seem to be having. The agent warns Mika of Agent Maslow's case of stress. When Mika and Maslow meet outside the office, Maslow reveals that Zabransky also came to him and asked the same thing about Mika. Mika then assumed that certain parties were watching them because of their investigation of the nine clans and would try to stop their research. Maslow also thought so because the actions of the nine clans were related to the most influential people in the world. Influential people worldwide protect the assassin clans, and he asks Mika to increase vigilance. Unknowing to them, they're being watched. They both walk away unharmed, and Mika makes it home that night. She looks at Mrs. Sabaton's documents and learns more about the ninja clan's existence. The following day shows Rizo walking in a market. He flashed back to the moment he caught his teenage crush, Kiriku, cutting the bonsai rope, and said that Kiriku would get in trouble. However, Kiriku noted that every living thing, including bonsai plants, has a heart and the right to choose its own path. His colleague reminds him of his heart and instills some life into his stone-cold heart. After that, young Rizo had to undergo rigorous training to improve the sharpness of his sense of hearing. Lord Asanu ordered Rizo to wear an eye patch for a whole year and do everything blindfolded to get used to the dark, because a ninja must be able to fight and survive in any situation. At first, Rizo found it difficult, but over time he could adjust and fight against his opponents by relying on his rapidly increasing sense of hearing. Even though they were far apart, even Rizo could hear Kiriku's heartbeat, which was in sync with his own. The following day shows the lady ninja Kiriko beating another colleague. She wins the fight, and the clan master asks her to cut him, so he knows the meaning of failure. She refuses and gets cut instead by the clan master, and is sent to their clan's penitentiary. At night, Rizo is seen giving Kiriku some water secretly. He asks her why she did what she did, and there is no tangible response. The following day shows Kiriku and Rizo sharpening their weapons. One night when it rains heavily, Kiriku tries to escape from the ninja school of the new clan. Rizo, knowing this, tries to convince Kiriku to stay because the consequences faced by students who try to escape are executions. But Kiriku remains determined to leave the Azane clan and climbs the wall behind her. The present day shows old Rizo picking up a phone call from a Japanese caller. He instantly knows what he's supposed to do and runs off. He gets Mika's photo as the next target of the ninja clan. On the other hand, Maslow, often suspected by higher-ranking world intelligence agencies after discovering Alexei Sabaton's investigation of the nine clans, tries to warn Mika of the dangers that may come soon. Maslow supplies Mika with a gun just in case and asks her to find a safe hiding place. However, when Mika arrived at her apartment, there was a power outage in the apartment building. Mika notices the coincidence and immediately gets suspicious. She slowly makes her way to her apartment upstairs. She opens her door and hears something moving in her apartment. She walks to a room in her apartment and sees a familiar letter containing black sand. She's assaulted by ninjas in the dark, but her life is saved by another ninja who stops them. Mika fires her gun at the silhouettes and fights immensely in the shadows. She then realizes that she's helpless and watches them fight it out. 
One of the ninjas tries to save Mika, and after he manages to knock out the ninja who is intent on killing her, the ninja warns that there will be more to come, what they won't stop until you're dead. After that, the rescue ninja reveals his true identity from behind the shadows, and it turns out that the ninja is Raizo, Mika, who recognizes Raizo from the tape, is shocked that Raizo saved her life. After that, they leave before the other assassin ninjas come and kill them. Takeshi is seen leading the ninja group meant to finish off Mika. Run, little brother, run, Takeshi says before a flashback that reveals young Kiriku, who was running away, being chased and captured by Takeshi. In the flashback, Kiriko was tied to a pole, and Lord Azanu ordered Takeshi to execute Kiriku in front of all his students, so that no more students dared follow Kiriku's footsteps. Takeshi, who knew that Raizo and Kiriku were close friends, then stabbed Kiriku in the heart while carving a sly grin at Raizo. The present day shows Mika and Raizo in her car escaping their ninja pursuers. The duo introduces themselves, and Mika asks why he's after his clan. This question makes Raizo remember an assassination he carried out with his Azenu clan master by his side. According to the clan master, the man was wearing a gold watch. He told Raizo to bring the watch to him, which he proceeded to do. After a long and tiring fight with the heavy man, he wins and removes the gold watch from his hands. The next scene shows a wounded Raizo holding a golden watch on top of a building. He extends the gold watch to his clan master, who later tells him to keep the watch. Another girl who tried to escape the clan was brought to his face just then. She reminds him of Kiriku, and the Azunu clan master orders Raizo to eliminate her to become a true Azanu. Unable to eliminate the girl, Raizo cuts his clan master with his Kusarigama. Enraged, the clan master orders the assassins present to end Raizo's life. Raizo almost ended up losing his life as he fell down the tall building, but luckily a swimming pool saved his life. Back in the present, Mika and Raizo decide to hide in a motel for a while. Raizo then asks Mika to clean herself without using soap and change clothes. After that, he spreads cigarette smoke on Mika's body to hide her scent, because ninja assassins have a sharp sense of smell like a wolf. Assassin ninjas could find their targets just by smelling their scent. Mika, who thinks that Raizo wants revenge on the Azunu clan, then contacts Maslow to meet. Mika and Raizo meet with Maslow to discuss their situation in a remote place. Even so, Raizo senses something is amiss at their meeting this time, as he is suspicious of Maslow. Why have you done this? Then why? Sure enough, not long after, special forces immediately attack Raizo with a high-voltage electric shock, paralyzing him instantly. Maslow and Europol's special forces then take Raizo to a hidden location for interrogation. Doesn't look like a killing machine to me sir. Looks like he belongs in a boy band. He couldn't have heard that. Mika, who feels betrayed by Maslow, immediately demands his explanation. Maslow explains that he had no choice because those in power ordered him to arrest Raizo. He calls her up to a room, tells men to clear the space, and explains his suspicions to her, telling her how serious the higher-ups are taking this ninja case. He gives Mika a beacon and tells her to activate it whenever she needs his help. Mika pays Raizo a visit to his cell and gives him some water. She tells him Maslow is on his side, and Raizo tells her it's already too late. Mika runs to warn Maslow, but it's already too late. The lights go off, and everyone is alert immediately. Mika makes her way to Raizo's cell, and Raizo warns them of the impending danger. However, things take a drastic turn as the assassins begin their work. They eliminate all the guards. Fortunately, Mika finds the key to Raizo's cell and frees him just in time. Raizo eliminates a ninja as he's released and leads Mika to the right path in the corridor. Raizo tells Mika to wait for him as he defends both of them against some assassins. Meanwhile, the other guards are still fighting against a shuriken throwing killers in the computer room. Fortunately for Mika, she can make it to her car upstairs, leaving only Raizo and the other assassins to fight. Raizo meets Takeshi and his ninja squad and engages in a hot fight. Little brother, Takeshi taunts. Raizo successfully defends himself against all the ninjas attacking him. Wounded, Raizo makes his way to Mika's car and is attacked by more ninjas. Meanwhile, Mika is in her car waiting for Raizo when a ninja attacks her. Scared, she turns on her car and drives. She successfully shoots his leg and fends him off. Shurikens were hurled toward her car as she drove off the parking lot, destroying her windshield. Luckily, she's able to escape the fight. Raizo successfully defends himself against the assassins and makes it to the roads of Berlin. The ninja clan pursues him and catches up to him through the oncoming vehicles. Takeshi fights Raizo and cuts him in the stomach. Mika helps Raizo out and drives him away. 
After that, Mika takes the seriously injured Rizo to an inn to hide because Rizo is reluctant to be taken to the hospital. Mika thanks Rizo for saving her life while he unconsciously sleeps and activates the beacon Maslow gave her. Then, she hides nearby the motel and sees his ninjas come to their room. The task force arrives, but Rizo is gone. Rizo is seen in a moving container as he heals himself with the technique their clan master used. The vehicle stops, and Rizo is presented to the Azunu clan master. He reminds Rizo how disappointed he was for the shame Rizo brought to his clan. Rizo is set to be executed that night. On the execution spot, Rizo spits out a beacon that pings the location of the clan's whereabouts. The agency arrives just in time to eliminate the clan. The assassins defend their home, and a hot fight ensues. Mika, who came with the Europol troops, immediately frees Rizo. After that, Rizo engages in a deadly duel with Takeshi, whose abilities almost equal Lord Izunu. However, Rizo, who intends to avenge the death of Kiriku, has been training very hard to wait for the moment to come face to face with Takeshi. Despite fierce resistance from Takeshi, Rizo was finally able to subdue the man and avenge Kiriku's death. Still badly injured and covered in blood, Rizo tries to fight Lord Izunu, whose fighting abilities seem timeless, even though his body is starting to age. Lord Izunu could easily parry and reverse Rizo's attacks until he was finally pushed and managed to be paralyzed. When Lord Izunu was about to kill Rizo with his sword, Mika came and shot the clan leader, saving Rizo. However, Lord Izunu, who suddenly disappeared into the darkness to avoid Mika's attack, appeared behind her and stabbed her right in the heart. Immediately, Rizo was furious to see Mika killed before him, then got up and returned to fight Lord Izunu with all his remaining strength. After a fierce and deadly duel, Rizo finally managed to kill Lord Izunu with a deadly shadow blending move. Rizo, who still heard Mika's heartbeat, then carried her from the flames outside. Maslow and Europol's special forces managed to defeat the ninja assassins of the Izunu clan. Rizo then tells Maslow that Mika survived Lord Izunu's deadly attack. I don't understand. She's got a hole through the middle of her heart, but she's still alive because she has a unique body condition. Her heart is on the right side of her chest. When the Europol special forces had left the secret base of the Izunu clan and the fire had been extinguished, Rizo stayed behind and climbed the wall that Kiriku had used to escape. From there, on top of that wall, he saw a beautiful view of the mountainous area surrounding the place. Rizo smiled, and for the first time in his life, he breathed in the fragrance of the freedom that had been Kiriko's dream. Thank you for being a part of our journey. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below. Your support means the world to us. Stay inspired and spread positivity. See you soon.